Hi, John Valvano here, and in this video, we're going to talk about the central limit theorem. Okay, now, um, uh, this is a big deal in the field of uh, math and the field of data uh, and the, um, the field of electrical engineering, and it's just a brief introduction here into this uh, in the context of, of 319K. So what, what I want you to think about is if you have a signal, okay, and we'll call that the true signal, okay, and if you add on top of it noise, okay, uh, the central limit theorem will help us to, um, will help us to analyze the behavior of this noise, okay? And uh, uh, the kind of assumptions we're going to make in this, uh, in 319K, is that the true signal is a constant, okay, uh, and the noise is added uh, to that constant, okay? Now, we don't have to make any assumptions about this noise except for the following two, and that is the noise uh, is independent from each other, okay? And the fact that the noise is identical, the behavior of the noise, the noise is, um, is, in the, is identical, identical, which means whatever caused the noise, uh, whatever process caused the noise here causes the noise there. Okay, and this is very typical of noise. And the cool part about this is if we look at signal plus noise, uh, one of the things that's going to, uh, essential limit theorem is going to allow us to do, and that is if these are sampled points, right? If these are sampled points where signal plus noise, x1, x2, x3, this is a sequence of samples. What we're going to do in the central limit theorem is either add them up Okay, or we're going to add them up and average them. Okay, uh, and as you saw from um, from the other videos, is that there is a register in the microcontroller called the SAC register, which can take a number between zero to six, and this automatically will do this hardware averaging for us. So zero is one sample. Okay, so this is n, uh, or two samples, or four samples, or eight samples, or 16 samples, or 32 samples, or 64 samples. So basically, if we set the register, um, if we set the register equal to four, it'll, it will take 16 samples and average them together. Now, what the central limit theorem will tell us, two things. Uh, first of all, it'll tell us that the average, okay, let's call this x, uh, x uh, average, that the average, let's call this true value mu, okay, uh, that this average will approach mu, uh, which is perfect. So uh, the sample data averaged together is going to produce the true value. Uh, the second thing it does is it tells us that the distribution will become normal, okay? And uh, you'll see this in my demo in a moment, okay? So in order for me to show you the demo, uh, what I'd like to do is just to find one sort of mathematical plot, okay? So, okay? and it's called a probability mass function, okay? So again, I've sampled x1, x2, x3, I've sampled this multiple times, many times, and what I'm going to plot is a frequency count, okay? And this is the number of times a certain A to C value. So in other words, if I were to measure 1,000, uh, and this number were to be 1,000, and that number were to be, uh, and that number were to be 1,001, and that number were to be 1,000 again, Uh, it will then basically count the number of times and say, let's say, uh, say, let's say sometime later, I got three counts of, of 1,002 and I got more counts of 1,003 
And basically it is a, on this axis, on the X axis, is the measure and what I measured, in our case the A to D converter from zero to 4095. Uh, assuming a constant input, right? If we assume the input is constant, uh, then this probability mass function is a measure or a, a plot of the shape of the noise. Now you see it's unsorted. It doesn't tell you the sequence of the numbers, but it tells you which ones are prevalent. Okay? And again, the probability mass function, uh, uh, the central limit's going to say is as I take more samples, uh, this thing, this average, this average, as I average, uh, I equals 0 to n minus 1. As I take this average, as n goes to infinity, okay, larger and larger, this average will approach the, the true average. Okay? And we'll see something awesome uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the demo. Okay, so let me go over to the demo. Okay, so what I have here is one of those probability mass functions. Now my input is a constant. Okay, and what it shows here is the shape of this waveform. This is, again, this axis here is the count or the frequency, the number of times. And this axis there is the A to D value. Now it's zoomed way in, so um, it doesn't go all the way from 0 to 4,000. So you can see individual values. And that's a single point without averaging. All right, let me get my finger on the button here, see if I can make this do fun stuff. Okay, push the button. And it will stop. Okay, let go of the button. And now this is a probability mass function with two points. Woohoo! Okay, now you saw in the last one it had multiple humps. Okay, keep pushing, John. Okay, so now uh, this is a probability mass function with four points. And what you're going to notice is the amount of noise goes way down. Okay, uh, and what, the, what I mean by noise is that the that the shape is going to become straighter and straighter and straighter. In other words, if there were no noise, all the samples would be the same. Okay, that was 8. Okay, there's 16. Again, there's a cost to that. It takes 16 times the amount of power. Okay, it takes 16 times as long to do it. Okay, but the shape of this waveform becomes Gaussian. Okay, it becomes normal, and that the standard deviation, or the spread of this, okay, uh, becomes shorter. So the amount of noise in the signal goes way down if I hardware average. You can see it's almost straight up with a single point, okay? Uh, let me, uh, just to sh compare that, let me go back and show you what one looked like, okay? All right, that was one again, okay? You see all the bumps? Yeah, it's got multiple bumps, okay? It's not normal. So in summary, the central limit theorem tells us is if we average, uh, then that the average of the data points will approach the average uh, without the noise, okay? And second, the more we average, the, the less spread or the smaller the standard, devi standard deviation is in our data. So if you're, uh, in, in summary, if your stuff is uh, bouncing around, uh, turn on that SAC register and you'll see the noise will go down. Uh, but realize there's a cost, there's a cost to it. It's going to cost you power and it's going to cost you time. All right, enjoy this lab.